Um, Congressman, I start with you and your thoughts on the retirement of um, someone who has to be the most effective uh, person calling out Republican hypocrisy and submission to Donald Trump. It's a major loss for the Congress, Nicole, and a major loss for the country. I served alongside Adam Kinzinger. He is an honest man. He is unafraid. Uh, he will pursue the truth wherever it leads. And the good news for the country is that he still has over a year left in Congress. And I can assure you, he will use all of his resources and all of his time to con continue pursuing the truth with regards to what happened on January 6th. And not just the truth, but who needs to be held accountable. So it's a big loss for the Congress. By the way, Adam Kinzinger is not running away. He's going to remain active. He's also a victim of redistricting in Illinois, which is happening all over the country. Uh, so I don't want people to think that he's walking away. He's not. He pretty much doesn't have a choice, given the way the maps are going to work out in Illinois. But the good news, again, is that we still have him for over a year. I want to come to you, Jackie Alemany. Um, was this a surprise to his colleagues or his staff? Or was this for some of the reasons the congressman cited expected? I think regardless of the reality here and the message that uh, former Congressman Corbello is putting forth here, you know, this uh, is a surprise to some people on, on Capitol Hill. And it's also being looked at as a victory for people in Trump's orbit. Former Trump staffers have publicly and very privately um, been taking a victory lap. Uh, this is uh, undoubtedly a scalp for President Trump. Trump, former President Trump, um, and his efforts to uh, really wipe out anyone who publicly disputes his false assertions of election fraud and um, his continued, you know, propagandist attempts. Um, and so first it was Anthony Gonzalez, now it's Adam Kinzinger. I feel like last week, Nicole, you and I were just talking about sort of the um, the the slow disintegration of the group of 10 Republicans uh, who voted to impeach President Trump. They've gotten quieter and quieter, smaller and smaller. And now one of the biggest leaders of that group is uh, calling it quits and throwing his, his towel in. Mike Schmidt, Donald Trump has smeared people, places, things, but he has no venom quite as vicious as that for Republicans who don't sort of Kevin McCarthy him, pick out his favorite flavored Starburst and recant the truth about the insurrection. There's no one more vilified by Trump and his crowd than Republicans who, in his view, cross him. And the president, you know, the former president, has been incredibly effective in this area. The list of moderate Republicans that have survived the Trump era is small, if not non-existent. Uh, you know, look, just this week, Jeff Flake uh, was confirmed to be an ambassador for Joe Biden. Just a, a clear example of yeah. where these people stand in Trump's world and the stronghold that, that Trump continues to have on the party here, even if his, his, his uh, rallies and his speeches and everything are not broadcast on national television and are not given full attention, he continues to show this stranglehold on the party that continues to move in his direction. It's not like it, it's moving away from him. It moves closer and closer to him, like the example of today. Yeah, and, and I guess, Congressman, that, that's what's so remarkable, that he was the one of the biggest electoral losers in modern Republican history. His defeat... Um, in the popular vote was of historic size. His loss of the Senate was a crushing blow to Mitch McConnell. He is a, a sort of an electoral loser, the likes of which Republicans haven't seen in, in a few cycles. And yet what Mike's saying is certainly true. His ability to purge anyone who, they're not crossing his tax policies. They're not crossing him on a policy level. They're not parting with Republican orthodoxy. They're simply telling the truth, that we were in safe rooms on January 6th because Donald Trump supporters came here to try to overthrow the peaceful transfer of power. They attacked the United States Capitol. And what I find interesting about your letter is it, it, it feels like a defense for the rule of law, that a congressional subpoena has to still 
mean something. If we lose that, from Trump's perspective, he seems to be wielding as much power out of office as a loser as he did in. It is extraordinary, Nicole. I mean, Trump lost Congress uh, for Republicans. He lost the presidency for Republicans. He went out of his way to make sure Republicans lost two seats in Georgia, pushing Mitch McConnell into the minority in the Senate. And yet, Republicans who are fearful of a primary challenge, that's, by the way, that's the only reason they do it. And they will tell you privately, they won't say it publicly, but Republicans who are fearful of a primary challenge, which is most people in politics these days, to be fair, find the need to continue returning to the altar of Donald Trump to get a blessing and get another two years in Congress. And at the end of the day, uh, these people have to ask themselves, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Look at everything that's at stake. I, I very rarely sign public documents or letters uh, these days, but I thought I had to do this, Nicole, because this is about the truth. This is about defending our country's democracy. I come from a family, uh, you, we lost our country. My parents lost their country because there was no rule of law there one day when they woke up, and we don't want it to happen here. And that's why I signed that letter, and that's why I hope even as Adam Kinzinger leaves uh, Congress, uh, that more Republicans will wake up and understand that this is a lot bigger than another two years serving in the House of Representatives.